Hi everyone, it's Kathleen. We are here today to start block three of the Journal of Stitchery, which is repurposed fabrics for the background and butterflies. My block for this month is going to be a butterfly and I'm going to hold it up here if you'd like to take a screenshot and print it for yourself. You'll have a pattern to follow. I'm doing my intricate stitches on this. It'll be like a sampler, even though it will be block three. I'm going to be outlining. There's four quadrants. One, two, three, four. I'm going to outline the whole butterfly in one quadrant. Then I'm going to add a flower sampler in the second quadrant. Third quadrant will be outline, outlining with some painted stitches and the fourth quadrant will be completely embellished thread painting and which is just more or less satin stitches. So let's get started. I'm not going to be adding any more fabric to this because I want the stitches to be the focal point. We'll see how we finish it off later, but I'm actually going to be doing the stitches like this. This is a vintage, beautiful piece of lace, and yes, I do want it dripping off the sides like this when I put it in my book because I have my felt pages, regular craft felt. And I like that I can see the black on the outside. So let's get started. Lots of people have been asking for me to do my combined stitches. I photocopied my piece here. And this is hand-drawn by myself. And we are going to start with the outline. When I first start a design, I I draw a shape and then I figure out where I want to put my stitches and I'm going to this looks mumbo jumbo but I, I usually draw some stuff in so I know what I'm going to be doing so let's start block three I am going to be using wonderful pearl cotton in black I like the how smooth and satin it feels, satin-like it feels. And these are the colors of my inside of the somewhat monarch butterfly. I'm gonna start with a yellow. It looks like I've lost my color, color thing in here. So yellow, a solid yellow pearl cotton, a variegated crochet uh, sorry, embroidery floss that goes from lighter to darker of yellow. Coral and then variegated coral. Aqua, variegated aqua. Turquoise and variegated turquoise. So let's move these aside. I'm going to be doing the colored in the next videos. We're going to be working with black only today doing the outline. So that's all I plan to do is the outline today. And let's see what I have here. This. So I have a length of my black thread. I have a knot at the end. And I never use a hoop because my hands have to touch my needle and my thread as I'm working. So I have to see where I'm going put my thread right here. So I am going to do the outline today. Gosh, I love that. So let's start. I'm going to start in the center and it's going to be, I'm going to be using a stem stitch. Okay, I like to pull straight up, but I can't. I'll be knocking that camera over so let's go here are we in focus so i'm going to go around the top and 
there a stem stitch or an outline stitch one you hold the thread above the other you hold the thread underneath i like to hold it up above no i like to hold it with my thumb here we go so i'm holding back this knot so it's out of the way and i'm going to be taking small little eighth inch bites and I and I'm only and I'm going my needle will be facing my work so I'm going to move over on my line about a eighth of an inch and come up in the hole that I pierced and I'm just going to be going all the way around that. So I'm doing this with all of the outline. The hardest part for me, see, you see, it, it comes out, oops, I'm not even looking in the camera. It comes out the same hole that it went in. And you just keep going around, making sure you come up the same hole. And I'm using a number eight thickness. I don't know how many strands that would be in embroidery floss. Embroidery floss, when you when I stitch with it, I tend to get they, the threads separate. I like when they stay the same. So that's why I like pearl cotton. But I have a lot of embroidery floss so for for me the variegated is great i like to have a solid color and a matching variegated color because it blends when you create or when you when you stitch hopefully i'm on camera and that's all i'm going to be doing is just slow stitching this all the way around everywhere you see a pencil line here on the outline of this butterfly, on the right side, I'm gonna do all the pencil marks with my black thread and the antenna. On the left side, I'm just going to go around the out. Ooh, I might have to consider that one. Let's continue. When you come up with a design. Your design may change as you go. Because just by laying down the initial stitches, you may find that there's not enough space to do your design work in or there is too much space. So it's always evolving. There's no right way or wrong way of how you stitch. It's just your way. Everyone has a different technique. Everyone holds their needle and thread differently. See, that's the back. It's almost like a very close running stitch. And we keep on going. I've just drawn with a very fine tipped, I think it's a Faber-Castell marker, only because I had them for art journaling when I used to art journal. The hardest part of stitching for me, even though I've stitched for, I don't know, 50 years already, I still have a problem with keeping my stitches even. Some people just pick up a needle and off they go, and they are perfect. I still, after all these years, don't have the exact whoops and when your when your knee, thread gets tangled just drop it and it'll untangle and remember just keep your thread on one side of the embroidered line either on the bottom or the top it'll look similar and one is called an outline stitch, 
and one is called a stem stitch and for the love of me I can't remember which one I didn't look it up for me it's not important it's just what's more comfortable for your hands this is a, a very old linen fabric and it's nice to stitch with because the older the fabric is the softer the thinner the more worn it is I want to this month's block to be all about the stitches I find that a lot of these blocks are very similar in a beautiful collaged background and things and stuff put on top which is nice this one I wanted to emphasize the stitching and this is more embroidery than it is slow stitching in my mind and again it's just my opinion so no hate mail please in my opinion slow stitching is just that we don't really think about okay now I'm I'm going to interrupt myself I'm going to put my thread behind here only because I'm going around a corner and I want my thread to stay nice around the corner and I'm going to keep it on the top and I've learned that just by stitching so I am now going on okay now I can let's just bring it still to the top and take a small little bite now I'm not sure see look if I it would be a straight line over there and it would look silly you see that so I have to make sure that that thread at that point is going under my working line that way the thread follows the line otherwise it would have went across the fabric and you would have seen it like that. So by just moving your needle on the other side of the thread, it continues to outline properly. Now I'm keeping my working thread underneath because it's just easier for me with my thumb to feel. And again, you can see how my stitches still vary in length. They should be the same, well, should be. I would like it if it were the same. My anxiety, I have a little bit of OCD and some, some things have to be a certain way, others don't. You see how that nicely gives it a rounded shape? That's by making sure that your thread went on the outside and I'm tangled again. So I just drop it and I don't want my thread, if it were to be on the top, my thread would go a, a wrong way. It, I want to make sure that it's in the point. So it's a shorter stitch, but I'm going to go in that little shorter stitch and go up. Bringing my thread down and making sure it's underneath because if it was over top, it would go like that and you'd see that line. So let's go here. kept it underneath. But you'll learn this over time if you just stitch. You'll know when you have to move your thread a certain way over or under the line. And the last stitch goes right in the corner before the end right at the intersection and then up took it out I want to make sure it is in the hole and I pull now I'm making my working thread go below below the stem stitch small little bite uh oh your thread below the working 
the stem stitch and making sure you come up in the hole. I have a one finger underneath and one finger above because I like to feel, it's not I like to, I need to feel where my thread is going. And we're at the intersection here. We have two lines. So I'm going right in the intersection and up. In the hole, keeping my working thread below because I'm arcing. I don't know how to say it above the line. Oops, look at that. My thread came out, but that's okay. My stitch is made and let's just thread this baby. I'm working with a number one Milner's needle and that's because sometimes my thumb lets go and it's easier for me to grab onto a bigger needle, a long, sorry, a longer needle than a smaller needle. And that way I can use this needle for everything, for my wrapped stitches. See my thread is below the working and I'm continuing. I have a habit of when I see, a, I call this a, lo a long stretch. I want to make my stitches longer and that's not good. You should keep them, try to keep them for an outline stitch as uniform and as close together as possible. That's my favorite outlining stitch. Some people do a back stitch or a split stitch or this or that. But for me, I like it because it's a thick, a thick outline. And I want it raised. You see how it's nicely raised? And again, my thread is below and I'm just continuing working along. see how long we're already at 17 minutes so we'll see how long this takes to outline I'm going to continue with this one side here so I can show you how I do the insides of the rounder smaller pieces because I outline everything nice long long stretch that I have to try my hardest not to increase my stitch length. It's a bad habit I'm trying to break. I just never, people that can keep their stitch, I've seen on Pinterest, I love Pinterest, people have marked with a marker on their fingers when doing the blanket stitch. <laughs> I almost want to do that. But then again, your thickness of your the felt pen on your or your pen on your hand makes a big difference too. I just can't keep my stitches the same length. And off. That's why for for my sampler stitches, I used to use cross stitch fabric because that way all your holes are marked for you and all your stitches are the same length which is almost like cheating. Okay, one, two more stitches, I think. One and two. Oh, you see how, you see how it's uh, separated? I'm gonna come back up And my thread, I wanna keep close to the line. So to fix that, see I'm fixing an error. I'm inserting my needle backwards so I don't puncture, puncture the fabric. It's coming out. 
and I'm going to force the thread to go back down in my line. There we go. See, look, I fixed it. It was a little bit wonky before, and now it's straight. So let's lay this down. And this is, you can see, you, it really stands out, and that's what I like. I need a sip of coffee, ladies. So you would go around the bottom, and then you're going to go around that one. I'm not, I'm going to leave this one because it's going to be totally flowers. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that yet. So if you're following along with me, you're going to outline all of this and all of this only. Do not do the inside. We're going to do something else about that. So right now, I am going to continue, but I, I like to put a knot on the bottom, just a single knot, and it'll be covered by my, by, uh, by my felt. Now I'm going to go around these pieces. So I'm going to start in the center. I'm going to finish my thread however long it's going to take to do that and then I'll work on these small ones with a new piece of thread. And again, I'm keeping my thread on the bottom and taking small little bites. And I see my thread is dang getting tangled, so I just, I just let my thread dangle from my work and it naturally, due to gravity, untangles. Whoops, you see how I went through that thread? You do not want to do that. You want to take go out, just come out the hole, but I don't want to pierce my thread. I don't like split stitches, but that's just a matter of taste. If you like split stitches, that's great. Not everyone can like a certain thing. Okay, and let's roll this up a bit. I roll my work in a little jelly roll at the back. I can always iron it later. And you can see a little bit of thread coming out. My hoop, my eye in the one number one milliner's needle is quite large, and which I like. And pearl cotton is slinky, silky. So it slides out of the. I can also twist it if you know which direction to twist it. And the hardest part of outlining is doing the small sections like these little circles. I do want the circles outlined because I it'll pop. The colors of the thread that I'm going to satin stitch on the inside they're going to pop, but I do want it outlined. So do I want to outline it first or do I want to outline it later? That's a very good question. Okay, this is, we're getting to a curve here. So I'm coming into the curve and I'm still on the bottom. I'm going to go on the top. If I go underneath, you can see how it's going to go like this on the design. It's going to cut, and I want it to be exactly on the outside. So I'm going to take the smallest bite. I, I could have taken a smaller one. It's on top. My working thread is on top. I'm, if I'm going around a circle like this, I'm going to take and my thread. Working thread is over it to keep the shape. Because if it's not, look how it'll cut across. I want to keep it on the outside. 
the smallest little bite and then a small bite and we're in the home stretch so let's go with that Just about running out of thread. Hopefully I can get to this line, the intersecting line. And I'm coming, oh, look at that. I have it going over. I want it going under. So you just stick the back of your needle in and, oops, no, that doesn't look good. So let's go back. That looks good. Okay. See, it's very easy to fix which side of the uh, stem stitch you want to work on. Just insert the thread. And this is my last stitch. And I'm going to go down exactly in the same hole. Perfect. Now I'm going to tie this off. Whoopsie, look at how that came out. Okay, and just a single knot, and I'm going to snip that. Let's see, this is an empty needle. You can see how I got ready for filming. I have my, these are all number one Milner's needles. Oh, she number oh. Oh, that's a real long one. Okay, so I've got another nice long length, and yes, it has a knot on it. Okay, 27 minutes to do that, so can you imagine how many hours it's going to take to fill this in? It looks beautiful. I like to, I'm going to continue using that stitch. I want to show you how to do the little guys. The little guys, and I, if I don't want knots underneath here, so I'm going to start my thread. Okay, where do I have to come out? You see, this is bothering me. You can, I don't know if you can see it. I want this thread to be pushed over somewhat. So I need it to come up here. Oh, that's not good. Okay, what was bothering me now? The thread is not. Okay, it's all, I'm gonna leave it. I can't find it, so maybe it is good. So I wanna anchor my thread over here. So, and I anchor it like this. I'm just grabbing the stitch. I'm not sure if I did, so let's just go. I don't wanna grab any of the linen. So I'm feeling with my finger and I'm starting Here. So I go in with the eye of the needle and it's going to just catch that. And it's like weaving. I'm going to go back, forth, back, forth. And okay, that one is my eye is too big. Let's go underneath. I was able to go underneath like that. Okay, so I'm close to where I want to come out. So let's just go. Okay, this is going to be very, very difficult because such tiny spots. I'm going to keep my working thread above my circle because I know that it's going to be arcing that way. Just years of experience. That's all, so rolling up this. And it might even be easier to just do a French knot in one of those instead of satin stitches. Doggies are gonna be barking, someone's coming to the door, and I have to continue filming. So please, I'll try to talk a little bit more. Take 
Here, let's see. Can I see better without my glasses up close? Okay, I took my glasses off. And I am... I'm going to just take... I'm going to stay on the outside of that line. And I am just going to take... Keep my working thread above. And I want to just grab... Okay, that's three, three. I wanna grab two fabric threads, two fabric threads. And I'm not pulling very hard because I don't want this to um, snag my fabric. So I'm still keeping my thread on the outside around the circle, pulling up two threads, if I can see two threads. Turn my fabric and make sure my thread is positioned right. And again, two more threads coming up at the outside of the hole and turn my fabric again. Uh, only taking two threads at a time. Keeping my thread above the line. This is very piddly, finicky, working with these taut, doing tiny, tiny little circles. I don't like to do fiddly stuff like this, but in this project, I have to. All right. And it's almost like doubling this. When you do a stem stitch, it's almost like you're using two layers, two strands of this thread, which makes it off nicely and continue oh come on don't get tangled and maybe two more stitches there we go whoops I'm trying to do it on camera and that's more stitches. And going in the first stitch and keep pulling. Okay, that is nice took a lot of work to do that one. Now let's go around the second one. I'm going to move over a little bit. This is going to be difficult. Let's move over one more. Okay, try to get in camera. One more strand. I'm working on this second circle. My thread is above the circle, not below, because I know I'm going around that way. And I'm trying to do two threads. I'll have less stitches because the uh, Sir.